Yeah. Says it's now streaming. <clears throat> okay. Hello, I'm Jamie from CEP and I manage our voter outreach initiative called Climate and Energy Voters Take Action. We're hosting this series called CEP Votes as a way to share the great work that CEP staff are doing and highlight how it relates to voting and civic engagement. We'll be here live on Fridays at noon interviewing CEP staff until the Friday after the election, which is November 6th. Now I'll turn it over to Michelle. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm an intern with the Climate and Energy Project. I work with Jamie on the Climate and Energy Voters Take Action Initiative. And today we're interviewing Dorothy Barnett, CEP's executive director, to have her tell our listeners a little bit about wind outreach in Kansas and how voting impacts this issue. So thank you for joining us today, Dorothy. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me on CEP Votes. I'm really excited about the C uh, civic engagement that CEP is facilitating with the Climate and Energy Voters Take Action program. Thank you so much, Dorothy. The voter outreach that we're doing fits right in with the longstanding work that CEP has been doing to increase civic engagement around climate energy issues. Dorothy, can you fill us in on the wind outreach work that you've been doing with CEP? Sure, Jamie. So for more than a decade, Kansans have supported the transition to clean energy. In fact, in some statewide polling we did of Kansas voters a few years ago, nearly 90% of Kansans supported expanding wind and solar energy. So by the end of this year, we'll have 40 wind farms operating in 30 counties across the state. Wind energy has reduced carbon emissions by 40% in the last decade and has brought huge economic benefits to landowners who lease their land and counties who host wind farms. Unfortunately, like we've seen around a lot of different topics, misinformation about wind energy has started to spread across the state. Opponents of wind energy often cite information from websites that are not peer reviewed nor science-based. And more often than not, they don't have any examples of, of uh, from Kansas. Um, we've had wind farms in Kansas now for nearly 20 years. And, and we haven't seen um, any of the trouble that are often described by opponents of wind power. Um, so recently, um, in partnership with the Kansas Department of Commerce, we've been hosting elected official workshops uh, with experts from state agencies, uh, universities, and other uh, subject matter experts. So we can try to get the facts about wind power to local decision makers. Um, we're also monitoring websites and social media for misinformation to try and provide links to fact-based information as well. Great, thank you, Dorothy, for that update. And if you are watching, be sure to quest post your questions in the comment section on Facebook Live and we'll answer them on live. Um, so Dorothy, what can you tell us about how voting can impact this issue? Well, one of the things that we really recognize is that it is so important for us um, as voters to vote for people who share our values on climate and energy issues. Um, it is possible that we'll see attempts at the Kansas State House this year to make it more difficult to cite wind farms. Um, and while CEP doesn't have an issue with common sense guidelines, the Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks and Tourism already has a robust process for wind developers to go through when they want to put up a wind farm in Kansas. Um, additionally, there are many environmental, wildlife and land use reviews that must be undertaken according to the US Fish and Wildlife rules. Um, CEP really wants to support common sense rules, but not rules that are intended to make it impossible for continued wind development so voting for people who, who share your values on these issues, we think is really key. Thank you. So if someone was listening today that would like to inform a candidate about this particular issue and or ask a question in order to learn about where that person stands on this issue, what would be a good way to frame it? So one of the first things I would ask is if they support continued wind energy development, 
Um, you know, that's going to be one way to find out how they feel about the issue. Um, I'd, I, I, if they have concerns about wind development, um, I had a conversation recently with a candidate who really was giving me the, the wind opposition talking points. And, um, you know, I, I was able to share some, some fact-based, science-based information that I hope helped them get a bigger picture view of wind development. So I'd encourage them to reach out to CEP to get some fact-based information to help them make informed decisions. Yeah, I agree. It's really important that people are receiving factual information. So what piece of instructional advice would you offer someone who has yet to vote in Kansas? Sure. Well, first of all, if you're like me and you requested an advanced ballot, um, as soon as you receive it, I would make a plan to fill it out and return it. Um, if you haven't received it yet, um, I'd encourage you to wait for it to arrive. Um, if you are eager to vote, um, you may go to a polling place to vote without that mail-in ballot. Um, if you do that, you'll be given a provisional ballot, which isn't counted until after election day. Um, you can count, check the status of your ballot on voter view um, to see if it's been mailed to you yet. Um, if you go online in voter view and you see that your ballot has been mailed and you're concerned because you still haven't received it, um, I would check in with your county election clerk. Um, they're not all mailed at once. Uh, when I spoke with my election clerk, she informed me that they send them in batches. Um, and so, you know, it's just possible that yours hasn't gotten to you yet. Um, if you're concerned, I would encourage you to, to contact your election clerk. Um, provisional ballots aren't bad, um, but it, you can't have two outstanding ballots. And so um, really important if you can wait for your mail-in ballot to arrive uh, to do that. And I'll just add also on voter view, you can find out if your ballot has been received. So if you are like Dorothy and you're gonna drop off your ballot today, or like me, I also have mine sitting here waiting to be delivered. Um, I'll be able to, to check, Dorothy and I will both be able to check voter view to see that our ballot was received. So really great feature that we have. So at CEP, we believe in strong civic engagement to help move Kansas toward a clean energy future. And we want to ensure that you have accurate and timely information. We hope you've learned some important information about wind development in Kansas and are even more motivated to get out the climate and energy vote. We're nearing the end of our live program here, but before we go, Michelle is going to talk briefly about an, initi an initiative we launched to reach even more voters in Kansas who care about climate and energy issues. Thanks, Jamie. So CEP launched the Climate and Energy Voters Take Action initiative to help turn out more environmental voters in Kansas. And one way that we can widen the number of Kansas voters is to ask those of you who care about climate and energy issues to talk to your network of people about voting. And this is called relational organizing. It takes advantage of the fact that we are the most effective at getting people to vote because they hear about voting from people they know and they trust. So you can start by joining CEP's voter team, which gives you access to a really neat tool for informing conversations you have about voting. And if you'd like to learn more, be sure to drop us an email at takeaction at climateandenergy.org or visit our webpage. Um, and just check the comment section for the link to the webpage and our email address. Okay, thank you, Michelle. And thank you, Dorothy, and to all of you out there for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and drop them in the comment box. And um, if we don't get a chance to respond to them today, we will respond to them as soon as we can. Um, you can also email your questions to us at the email that Michelle provided, takeaction at climateandenergy.org, and that will also be in the comments section. So next Friday, we'll be interviewing Rachel Miss Livy, also from CEP, about the connections between climate and health. You can tune in at noon again next Friday, that's October 30th. And thank you all for helping us transition to a clean energy future.